So what is a low buy year? Well, it's sort of relative, but ultimately it's just where, you know, it's a lower buying year where you buy less things, spend less, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> botching this a bit. Hey there, fashion friends. Welcome to today's episode. I am very happy that you are here with me today. So it is a new year. Yes, today is the first day of 2023. Yeah, so feeling good. It always feels good to start a new year, doesn't it? Kind of, you know, fresh start. Um, just a little bit of a reset, lots of, you know, new beginnings, all that fun shenanigans. So I think for some people, um, if you are a minimalist or somebody that sort of is looking to be a minimalist or start out as a minimalist, or just maybe you're somebody that just wants to save some money, maybe you just want to buy less, whatever it is, um, a lot of people are looking to a low buy. And so this episode will definitely help you out with that. So that's what we're focusing on today is how to have a low buy year, mainly referring to your clothes or to your wardrobe. But I think you could definitely take these steps or these tips and implement them into any sort of aspect of your life. So I think without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, first things first, declutter. I know this sounds sort of counterintuitive because you're like, oh, I'm not gonna be buying anything. So do I really wanna be getting rid of things? Well, yes, I think decluttering is just a great way to start off because one, you're kind of just cleansing yourself of stuff you don't need. Because sometimes I think when you have too much stuff, it just creates distraction and noise and almost distracts you from the things you do have and that you do love. And so I've talked about this before within your wardrobe. If you hold on to pieces that are like your what if pieces or your just in case pieces or, or pieces that you like the idea of but aren't actually practical for you and they just sit in your closet, they ultimately are distracting you from those pieces that you love and are excited to wear. With that, then you're kind of able to see what you then have and see the pieces you really love. And this is then going to help you with this low buy because if you can see those pieces that you love and focus on those pieces that you love, um, it's not gonna make, give you that kind of urge to wanna look elsewhere as much. Okay, the next is seasonal lists. You could do it like right out the gate, like make a list for each season. Um, but I think at the beginning of each season, making a list of items that you need or really want that you think will contribute to your wardrobe, will contribute to that efficiency. And really being extremely intentional with that list, like not just kind of like it making it a frivolous thing, looking for those things that um, can add function or um, style to your wardrobe. And maybe sometimes there'll be nothing on that list, which is definitely the ultimate goal. If you don't need anything, fantastic. But what this basically does is it sets that kind of marker, sets that intention for you for that season. And it's not as daunting as like a whole year. So then you're just focused on that season. Um, which makes it just a little bit more attainable. It also helps you then with those hard decisions that you get faced. Like if you are, you know, faced with some temptation, if an item is not on that list, you can easily kind of disregard it. I say easily very loosely, but um, yeah. Okay, next is make a seasonal budget. So kind of going in accordance to your list, I'd say make a set budget. So if you have nothing on that list, I would say make that budget super low. Ultimately, I'd say, yeah, go to in, in accordance with you. That seasonal list helps you to kind of set that budget and so that you then can't go past that. Like if you've got the budget, it sort of holds you accountable to that list. Now, how you hold yourself accountable to that budget, um, that's between you and your willpower. <laughs> so after that, after you sort of established that list, you've established that budget, the next thing is no browsing. I would say this is one just is an ongoing thing for if you're taking a minimalist approach, you usually will eliminate that browsing <laughs> until you can get to a good place where you have good restraint. I do feel like after, you know, seven or eight years of being a minimalist, I'm at a good place now where I can actually go into a store and browse. 
um, and not feel that impulse to buy something just to buy something. I'd say the only time you should shop online or go into a store is when you are specific. So I need this raincoat. So I'm gonna go into the store for this raincoat and that's what you're going in there for. And you look for the raincoat and if it's not in there, <laughs> then you leave. That's sort of what I mean is like, you gotta have that, you know, intention at this point, especially with a low buy year. And the next one is reorganize seasonally. Whenever I start a new season, I always reorganize, uh, whether it's I do another declutter or whatever it may be, but I always kind of reorganize my wardrobe because for me, again, it's like a nice little reset and it helps me see what I have. It helps me sort of get re-excited about what I have when I reorganize and make it all clean looking and pretty. It's sort of like uh, just kind of reawakening to what I have and in a way sort of makes you feel like you are getting some new pieces because it makes you kind of look at things a little bit differently and how this contributes to a low buy. I think we all have that urge in us. No matter who we are, we have that urge to want something new. So I think a little way to kind of trick yourself, trick your mind, um, trick those kind of impulses is to have that reorganization and helps you get re-inspired and therefore makes you feel like you don't need to go out and buy new things to refresh your wardrobe. It already kind of feels refreshed by just reorganizing it. And lastly is find a low buy buddy. Low buy buddy, LBB, L double B. LBB. If you can find somebody that's kind of on the same page as you, maybe it's your partner, maybe it's your sister, brother, um, maybe it's your best friend, maybe it's your mom, your dad, whoever it is, but somebody that can kind of share in that goal and want that accountability as well will definitely help you to kind of hold yourself a little bit more accountable versus if you're doing it on your own, it's a lot easier to kind of just like justify things, to kind of justify things in your head and that sort of thing. Whereas when you have a low buy buddy, uh, if you are feeling tempted, you can sort of talk to that person and maybe see if you they think you are being justified or to kind of snap you out of it or just to kind of commiserate with, or maybe even do some trades. Like maybe you guys, you know, are over certain pieces. So you do a little trade. I've always had my husband who sort of have, has helped me and has been that buddy for me. Um, and it definitely makes it a lot more fun and a lot more attainable um, and a lot more sustainable. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. That is how to have a low buy year. So comment below and let me know where you're at. Are you gonna do a low buy year? Are you gonna do a no buy year? Are you somebody that has no interest in it whatsoever? Have you done this before? And what have you learned from it? Let's definitely have those conversations. I love hearing from you guys. If you did like today's episode, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, comment below, share with your friends and subscribe for future weekly episodes and click the cute little bell to get notified when I post those new episodes. All right, my friends, you have a beautiful rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe, love and support each other. And we will definitely be chatting soon. Bye.